crazy if Neo Soul Progression has been covered so many times because it sounds amazing. It's like the master guide to the Neo Soul guitar style. Today I'm going to break down five key things from this progression that make it sound so interesting. And they're things that you can then incorporate into your own Neo Soul progressions. Let me know in the comments if you'd also like me to break down the solo in a future video. The number one thing you can learn is that the Lydian scale equals Neo Soul. Whilst the chords today are beautiful and interesting on their own, their key role is to support the melody, which is based around the Lydian scale, which sounds like this. And the Lydian scale has all the notes of the major scale, but with the addition of a sharp four. It's not used very often in pop music as it's a bit too bright sounding, but it's common in film and television soundtracks like the Simpsons theme, which is based around C Lydian. So in general pop music, it's not great, but in Neo Soul over seventh chords, like for example, the A major seven, the Lydian scale sounds really tasty. It has this really exotic, bright flavor to it. The opening melody of the Roy Ziv progression features that sharp four from the Lydian scale. And it features it twice, so straight from the outset, you get a sense of the Lydian flavor immediately. Number two, the chords support the melody. When most people think about Neo Soul, they think about crazy chord extensions like seven flat nine, seven sharp five, minor nine. And this progression does have those types of chords. And it also has a special type of chord, which I'll go into later. But the purpose of all these chords is to support the melody. The first way that the chords support the melody is by creating a strong, consistent rhythm. So the chords land on the strong beats of one, two, three, and in the second bar, one, two, and. So even though there's a drum beat constantly through the track, the chords themselves also provide a sense of rhythm. And the second way the chords support the melody is a bit more obvious, is through creating these really lovely harmonies. The highest note in all of the chords are from notes from the melody. For example, with this major seven chord here, the melody note is this E on the B string. So it's really important when you're strumming the chord to make sure that you stop the strum on the B string. Otherwise, the melody can just kind of vanish. One way to get the chords to work well together is by playing close attention to voice leading. And this is particularly noticeable in this section here. Voice leading is keeping the highest note of the chords closely spaced and moving in a direction together. If you look at the highest note in all these chords, they are all a semitone or a tone apart. So you can hear these notes here. So all these notes are closely spaced except for this one note here. But in addition to being closely spaced, the highest notes also move in an ascending and then descending way. So they all move really, really well together. And by doing that, it just makes the chords flow so smoothly. Number three, diminished seventh chords are tasty. In Neo Soul you hear a lot of reverb, a lot of vibrato bar, but you also see this diminished shape a lot. The diminished seventh chord includes a root, a flat third, a flat fifth, and a double flat seventh, which is the same as a major sixth. I'm not an expert in jazz theory, but I do know that if you want to find a chord that supports a melody, this is a good shape to try. In this piece, we have this ascending run, and the half diminished chord is used over the top to provide the harmony for that melody. So we have this part here. Number four, the Hendrix chord. Before we look at the Hendrix chord, if you find the video helpful, please give the video a like and that will really help me out. Jimi Hendrix's influence on modern guitar is beyond equal. And in Neo Soul, the Jimi Hendrix double stops are particularly common. Towards the end of this progression, there's the Hendrix chord, which is a seven sharp nine chord, which Hendrix most famously used in Purple Haze.
With the sharp nine extension, the chord sounds really funky. The way that this chord is used in this progression is to create a five to one cadence, which is a common trick in reharmonization. So after playing this dominant seventh chord, which has a lot of tension, the music wants to resolve to a one chord. In this case, it's a C sharp minor nine. So when it resolves there, it feels quite satisfying, even though the C sharp minor nine chord itself still feels a little bit unresolved. So it still feels a bit unsettling, but that's cool in this context. Number five, embellishments. You can't have a great neo soul progression without embellishments. And the common pattern of a neo soul progression is a chord and then a single line run. And there's some interesting legato licks throughout this, like these ones. I'll check out this video next and I'll see you in the next one.